Hey folks, listen. Most homesteading and self-sufficiency videos are about oh, things like how to build a chicken coop or make compost. And this is going to be quite a bit different, but bear with me because our world is pretty surreal and a lot of things are happening that have some pretty serious implications on how we approach our self-sufficiency efforts. And I'm going to try and explain this as briefly as I can. There's a deal that Bill Clinton signed into law back when he was president called Graham Leach Bliley. What it did was basically took the shackles off of the big banks and allowed them to gamble in a great big casino called the derivatives market. That along with a bunch of shenanigans and in my opinion some fraud in the housing market put them into big trouble. We all know about all of this. Back in 2008, the economy almost completely collapsed. In 2010, Obama signed something into law called the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. The titles of these laws are always a bit misleading. We'll come back to this one in a minute. I know this stuff doesn't sound like homesteading, but stay with me because we'll get there. What you might know, or maybe not, is that the Federal Reserve Bank isn't really federal. It's a banking cartel or a private corporation, and the other big banks own shares of it. They get dividends on whatever profits it might make. Now, the government's given the Federal Reserve, as you might know, the ability to make money. They don't actually just print it and hand it out. It's all lint into existence. Now the Federal Reserve is supposed to manage some things in the economy through the supply of money. If it looks like we're going into a recession, they're supposed to be able to pump money in or raise the supply of money and create more inflation. Central banks all over the world have been pumping money into the system like crazy since 2008. The amounts are just astonishing, but it hasn't worked. And I'll tell you why. The banks, which control the central banks anyhow, have been taking the money and plowing it back into that casino. Now, I could spend an hour on this video and prove to you that in fact, we're not in a fragile recovery, but actually the economy's going into a depression that's going to make the 1930s look like kindergarten. But all you really need to know is that the central banks are really a one-trick pony. They control the supply of money by manipulating the interest rate that they lend the money out. Now, right now, they're lending out that money to the banks at 1%, and that's why you can't make any money on a savings deposit, because, well, why would your bank pay you more than that when they can borrow it at 1%? They call this zero interest rate policy, or ZERP. Well, it's nearly zero because it's 1%, but you get the idea. The Federal Reserve is a one-trick pony, and it only has one card left up its sleeve, and you're going to see that real soon, and it's called NERP, or Negative Interest Rate Policy, and what they're actually going to do is pay the banks to take their money. All right, so I've spent probably four and a half minutes almost on giving you some background on all of this. So here's the bottom line. The Federal Reserve is going to give banks money at negative interest rates. They're actually going to pay the banks to take their money. Now, the banks aren't going to take your money without requiring you to also pay them. So what are you going to do? You're going to pull all your money out of the bank and put it under the mattress or hide it in a coffee can somewhere and use it as you need it. The banksters won't stand for that because, well, they want to make a profit off of your misfortune, right? So here's what's coming real soon. They're going to do away with cash. It won't be there anymore. 
that'll force you to take your money out of the coffee can or under the mattress and put it in the bank and pay them for the privilege of holding it for you. All these technological schemes about how you can just wave your phone across a sensor or even these new smart watches they're coming out with are supposed to be more convenient but we know they're not more convenient than cash what they're really doing is setting the public up for a cashless society remember I said I'd get back to this Dodd-Frank Consumer Protection Act wink wink nudge nudge you know what I mean well this is a law that's like almost 9,000 pages and Title II, Section 209B, I think it is, of it, tells exactly how when the banks fail in the casino, when they lose their bets this next time, the government's not going to bail them out with taxpayer money. What they're going to do instead is seize your deposits. And it tells exactly in that section of the bill how they're going to do it. That means any money you have in the bank is, well, gone if the bank failed. As someone interested in self-sufficiency, you're already ahead of the game. But you're going to have to think more and more in terms of barter. Look, folks, I'm not an investment advisor, but I can tell you that the kinds of things I'm going to invest my money in are those kinds of things that I think will be in short supply in the future and things that I can barter with. Anyhow, go online and look up oh, sites where they have lists of the first hundred things to disappear or look around your neighborhood and see what people need on a daily basis and consider whether I'm right, whether we may very soon be living in a world where there won't be any cash, and whether you may need, in order to get by, some supplies and things that, well, your neighbors might need more than you, so that you can trade for things that you need more than them. Just a thought to think about and a very real scenario that will probably be coming in our near future. We'll get through this and well I'll see you next time.